Welcome friends to the 2024 Mercedes EQE SUV. This is gonna be the 350 formatic model and this is the exact version that I would recommend and I'll talk more about that during the driving segment. But the vehicle that we are checking out, it's gonna come with 288 horsepower and 564 pounds-feet of torque with approximately a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack. For 2024, we do have some great updates with these EQE SUVs. They've switched over to a heat pump for the HVAC to give you slightly better range. They've in general made some subtle tweaks and changes to the battery itself. And they've also improved the braking feel as well as increasing the amount of energy that you get back during regenerative braking. Also with these formatic EQEs, these vehicles are now able to turn off the front electric motor when it's not necessary to once again, boost your range. Now these vehicles do start at about $80,000 and the model I'm checking out is about $87,000 and everyone likes to cry and complain about these MSRPs but unlike most journalists I actually provide my audience with ways on how you can save a substantial amount of money with vehicles like this. So there is a broker by the name of Auto Companion advertising 12% off MSRP Plus there's additional incentives that you can qualify for like a $7,500 rebate when you lease and a bunch of other incentives if you qualify for them like fleet and loyalty. So yeah, you are able to get substantial discounts with these EQ electric Benzes. And I'll talk more about that towards the end of this video. But for right now, let's take this thing out on the road, see what it's like to drive because I recently checked out the EQB. And personally, I think the EQB Benz will serve a lot of families really well, or if you're just gonna buy this as a second or third vehicle, I think the EQB is great, but let's see if the EQE is gonna be significantly more refined. All right, so out on the road, maybe you can already detect this, but we have some goofy little acceleration noises. It's like playing a, an interesting musical note every time I accelerate with these vehicles. That's totally unnecessary. Unfortunately, you can turn that off if you don't like it. Yeah, there you go. I think you heard it. All right, so when I drove the smaller EQB, that vehicle rode really well over small bumps, large bumps. It was reasonably quiet as well. But this EQE SUV is also riding really well. And not to mention, this is demonstrating a more hefty feel as you're rolling down the road, which I always love with these luxury vehicles. Uh, this EQE weighs about 5,500 pounds. And we do also have 20 inch wheels with this test model. Now, if you go with the rear wheel drive base model, I think you can get 19 inch wheels. But fortunately, even with these 20 inch wheels, the vehicle is riding exceptionally well. Power and thrust is phenomenal, as you would expect out of a electric product, which is why, you know, unless you just want it badly or you can easily afford it, you don't have to step up to the higher trim levels if you don't want to. I mean, after all, this offers you over 500 pounds feet of torque, right? But it doesn't like make you car sick by any means. It's still a smooth acceleration that these Mercedes EVs have to offer and the whole driving experience is fluid there's surprisingly nothing strange about driving these cars it's like driving a regular gas powered uh, automobile the only thing about the EQB Benz was it had more of a mushy brake pedal to it uh, however for this 2024 EQE we do have a more firmer brake pedal that I appreciate stopping power continues to be good steering and all that is effortless this whole driving experience has been very effortless so that's good mainly all i care about with these luxury products is is it quiet is it refined is it smooth and does it offer some type of a unique hefty feel this eqe does eqb less so but that costs significantly less money than what i'm testing here so is it worth upgrading to the eqe if budget permits sure is it necessary not really. I genuinely do love uh, the EQB, especially for the incredible discounts 
and the low monthly payment that it has to offer. You do get a little bit more range here with the EQE. It's about 265 miles. If you got the base rear wheel drive, that would have been about 307 miles of range, but I'm assuming this is gonna be your second or third vehicle. So I guess this is penny pinching here regarding the miles, it's not that important. So I just thought I would bring it up. Regardless though, let's go ahead and let's transition into this interior space. No creaks or rattles okay everything is bolted together properly this massive wood panel here that feels good but the infotainment screen that's really what we need to talk about because we have here the massive 12.8 inch infotainment tablet display with the 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster the gauge cluster that's fine but this infotainment screen this is going to take some getting used to because there is a lot here you're going to have to develop some muscle memory know where things are to access quickly because you only have a few switches here at the bottom and they're all like these touch haptic type of buttons like for the volume you don't have a knob you have like this slider here but i feel like you can spend a month digging into this and you still won't be finished learning everything that there is to learn about this automobile so i understand most people they love this stuff for a regular person it's like their dream to have you know a tv in their car and they're used to you know seeing movies like james bond and you know batman or whatever the case might be and they see all those vehicles being featured in those films with all the gizmos and gadgets and they feel like they want those things in their automobiles mercedes knows who they are catering to for sure but most journalists they're definitely against you know embedding all of the controls into a touchscreen. yeah it's easy for the manufacturer but for the consumer it can be distracting and it's going to take some getting used to so i get it more and more companies that are going to resort to a design similar to this we see it with toyota and lexus as well they have that massive 14 inch display with the climate control towards the bottom however they do offer way more physical buttons and switches regarding these products you know who you are you know if you're going to be a person who either loves this or is going to be totally turned off by it again i see this as a second or third vehicle so i guess it's not that big of a deal but spend some time get used to this yes you do have your apple carplay your android auto your wireless charging pad all of that is good the burmester audio system i believe that comes standard and that does sound good it's a nice bright audio system however it's not on the same level as the s-class burmester but this is still really good for the money and for the potentially low lease payments that you can get this for once again we don't have any like double pane glass here but it is still a quiet machine so i do like that you have more silverized buttons here with the eqe which is nice for the window switches the seats continue to be comfortable and you have great visibility out the front the back that's not an issue it's an easy car to place out on the road seats are okay it could use a little bit more cushioning we do have a massive pano sunroof here the center armrest is insane it is so deep it's almost like a pickup truck armrest so you can definitely fit a lot of things in there glove box is a decent size once again when you open and close the doors they have a nice secure feel to them and most mercedes-benz products you already know they are iihs top safety picks these are some of the safest cars on the road all the useful safety tech that comes standard and it works really well you have this built-in google navigation system with like this augmented reality nav and you know what it actually works decently it took some getting used to but it was okay i, I didn't mind that completely it would definitely be better suited with a heads-up display now the rear seats they are practical i have plenty of space back there i am 5 foot 11 headroom continues to be good but granted the smaller eqb also offered good headroom and legroom as well however here with the trunk you have a more deep loading space however it's not a tall loading space like the eqb it almost has like this raked roof line so kind of cuts into your trunk area but overall not bad and there is a flap that you can lift up for additional storage so overall pretty practical now let's go ahead and let's conclude okay so driving these products not a problem they're smooth they're quiet pretty comfortable even with the 20 inch wheels and you have effortless thrust around town practicality and space in the inside is good but 
you have to really check out this infotainment screen for yourself to see if this is something that you can personally live with and if you can get used to it. You do have your CarPlay and your Android Auto, but again, if Mercedes could offer just a few more physical buttons and switches, not this touch haptic stuff, I would have really appreciated that. But again, like I mentioned, for most people, I'm assuming this is gonna be your second or third vehicle. And for the mass majority of people out there, this is their dream to have all the ambient lights and the big tablets, to have a TV in their car, the gizmos, the gadgets, the augmented AI reality stuff. They love it. So I'm guessing for most people, you're gonna appreciate it. It's there for you, you know, Mercedes Benz. This is the car for the ultra tech savvy customers. And as promised at the beginning of this video, here's how you can save over 12% off MSRP on these products. So Auto Companion, one of the largest brokers in the United States is offering 12% off the MSRP of these EQE 4 SUVs. However, when you lease these products, you have amazing incentives that you can also qualify for like a $7,500 rebate and some additional incentives as well, depending on if you can get loyalty or fleet you can ask Auto Companion and their team for more information regarding that. But there's also a free leasing calculator, which I will have linked in the description box below. And this free calculator will show you the interest rate of a lease, the residual values, and once again, the incentives that you can qualify for in your local area. A lot of people, they complain about the MSRPs of these EV products, but there is really no need for that because you just need to access the right resources so you're not leaving any money on the table. Obviously, the dealer discount of 12%, that's great, but you have to be able to stack these incentives on top to get the ultimate lease deal. So use that powerful calculator, run some numbers, and if you want to pull the trigger and you want to purchase one of these EQs from Auto Companion, he is located in Washington, D.C. He can ship nationwide. However, that's something that you have to pay for. And I've personally used his service twice now. Never had an issue. He does charge a broker fee. But if you sign up with my affiliate link in the description box below, you can take some money off of his broker fee. Hopefully you appreciate the fact that I am trying to help my audience save some money in this ridiculous car market. You can drive these near six-figure automobiles for a very reasonable monthly payment, especially on a lease. And I do recommend leasing because this is an EV. They're evolving all the time. So I personally would not want to be stuck with these products. I would rather lease and dump, but there is like an eight or a 10 year long warranty on the batteries. But personally, I'm gonna lease so I can get the maximum amount of incentives and I don't wanna leave any money on the table. So hopefully you appreciated this review. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and goodbye.